Wicked. Hello. How in the world are you? Amazing. So good. I've just come back from Canada and yeah, back in sunny, hot Brisbane. Um, so yeah, things are good. Sunny, hot Brisbane. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Thank Welcome you very much. Back. It uh, must Thank be nice you. to be, be home. It is, yes. So lovely to see everyone. We were away for eight or nine months. So, yeah, wow. it's the first time I've been away from my family and friends and, and Australia, like living away for that long. Yeah. Beautiful. What was that like? What was it like? Mm. Um, amazing. Actually, really, like, weird to try and think about mentally like time was just such a concept it was weird i kind of expected to come back and everything to just be the same from when we left um but yeah it was so cool because we were in canada for winter like their winter and then back to australia back to brisbane in the summer heat so that was just so bizarre for my body <laughs> and yeah the um yeah it was a bit weird mentally at first but yeah pretty cool yeah nice were you um on the west coast you in bc or yeah in bc yeah and then we did a two-week trip in the states down the west coast before we came back so that was freaking amazing yes so oh, cool oh nice where, where did you get to i went to seattle portland san francisco and la and then across to las vegas and got to see the grand canyon too so Beautiful. It was a pretty crazy trip. It was just like jam packed two weeks, just nonstop. Like there was no time for napping or like full on relaxation or anything. It was just like boom. <laughs> and, uh, were you were you um, road tripping or like how were you getting around? Were you flying? Or? Yeah, we we kind of mixed it up. So we did a, like some bus trips and a train trip, and then um, we did a road trip as well. Yeah, from San Francisco to LA, and then yeah to Las Vegas. So it was cool to mix it up. Yeah. What was your what was your favorite spot? You know what? I would not have thought I would say this, but Las Vegas. Vegas, yeah, Vegas is pretty magical, isn't it? It was just crazy. Like I think yeah, it was just I don't know. We weren't even expecting to go there and then we decided to just see what it's all about and you know, we spent hardly any money. Just walking down the street was my favorite part and just uh it's crazy. It was yeah. <laughs> just walking down the strip? Yeah, that's what like one day we just walked up and down for like six hours looking at things, just <laughs> amazed. I felt like I was like in a Disney movie because they have music playing everywhere and uh, it was crazy. Yeah, such a, I lo I love such Vegas. another world. I, I love Vegas. I've, uh, I've only been once, but no, I've been twice actually, but it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's incredible. Um, in terms yeah. of like, I've got friends there. I've got good friends who live there. So mm. staying with them and, you know, Visiting the Strip is is super fun. It's just crazy. It's like you said, it's crazy. It's everything mm. on steroids. You know, it's like oh yeah, it's, it's like consumerism. Like it's like the epitome of consumerism, um, yeah, and really like, and and wildness. It's but at the same time, it's quite a what's the word like a juxtaposition on like where it is based. Like it's just a beautiful spot. You know that that desert yeah. country. It's just like at the sunsets mm. and the sunrises. It's just so magical. Mm. And that desert space is. For me, anytime I go to the desert, I spend a lot of time in the desert here in Australia, mm. um, out in Alice Springs and surrounding areas. And I find that it really does put you into perspective in terms of your smallness as a human being, you know, oh, like, yeah. and like flying in there and just like landing and it's just open, vast expanse <laughs> of red earth. And it's like, okay, it's really humbling. Yeah, totally. We're tiny. <laughs> Very tiny, yeah. <laughs> so you've been on a bit of a journey. I, I remember us um, first meeting on our on the seven day challenge. I think it was, mm -hmm. and yeah, lots has happened since then. Tell, tell us, tell us what's been going on for you. Oh my goodness, yeah. So over the last couple of years, I've been on like a crazy personal development journey, and to have discovered things about myself I had no idea were going on. Like I realized my like conscience or my conscious reality was just so flawed mm. of how I see myself and how I see other people in the world and mm. and there I discovered a whole lot of self-sabotaging beliefs and 
and they are still so present for me and they come up all the time and it's really just sitting with them now and and understanding where they come from and what they really are mm. like before this podcast I was really nervous um, like really well really when I say nervous what I mean is like it was like fireworks in my body <laughs> like all of these things triggering and really what that is for me is like uncertainty mm. being able to sit with uncertainty and get that whatever's going on in my body physio like my physiology and psychology like all of the stuff that's going on inside of me is it actually happening like all of these thoughts that come up and fears and stuff basically like over the last couple of years I've discovered where they come from mm. and where they started and they you know I started off as a really excited mm. kid like I had such an incredible upbringing we lived on a nursery herb farm it was just amazing and and then stuff happened that I made really significant just little things that happened to me growing up that you know I started to think there's something wrong with me and yeah so and I realized that that was dragging all of these little things and decisions I made when I was younger all these beliefs I've been dragging them into my adult life and only in the last couple of years have I discovered where they came from and what's really going on with me mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's been like a crazy couple of years and amazing i think more has happened in the last couple of years than possibly my whole life oh, wow. because of how yeah like i think the way i was living before all of my personal development journey stuff um was very small like i'd only take on a couple of things because i'd get overwhelmed so easily mm. and um if anything made me uncomfortable i just wouldn't do it yeah. and would just completely self-sabotage it because this is what happens like my body has this strange that's not strange anymore but my body i'd have these reactions in my body that i didn't oh yeah go for it all right yeah so what i discovered over the last couple of years was that all of these body sensations and and fears that i've had are um aren't really reality like I've been living this life where through you know how I see myself as someone who's timid and shy and not really capable of making a big difference and what I can see now is how powerful and amazing I am and the difference that one person can make in this world is just absolutely incredible so yeah <laughs> yeah, that's mate. just a tiny bit of what's been happening yeah just a slither and in terms of just going rewinding a little bit there you mentioned that the uh, previously before this kind of journey and was that a bit of a catalyst i guess that seven day challenge was around that time that that was that that shift started happening i guess you mentioned that previously it was like flawed thinking. Can you be specific in terms of what in particular was the mm. the flawed thinking? yeah that, that you are referring to yeah i don't know if i've ever called it that before but i think that kind of sums it up yeah it's like um the way i've seen myself and who i am when i say flawed it's like it's not real mm. it's not true but that's how i saw reality like that's how i saw this is just how it is this is who i am i'm shy i'm timid I'm not like I get really scared when I public like when I do anything in front of people I just I get scared I can't do it um it was just like I was stuck in this is just how it is and I that kind of thinking was really flawed mm -hmm. like there was no possibility present for me it was just like so there was no basis on actual on reality it was just like a story you were telling yourself that yes, you believed so Mm -hmm. I really believed it. Just stuff in my head that I'd made up that just, yeah, it was not true at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. in, in terms of, yeah, I guess what was the realizations, I guess, you know, with that, with that time that we spent together, what changed, what shifted? Um, 
Well, it, it all kind of started for me with like all the landmark work I've been doing, mm. um, which I think you know a little bit about. Um, mm. It all kind of started from when I did the landmark forum and um, in like, honestly, it was like the first half an hour of the forum. Like I had a cane toad phobia, you know, cane toads. Yeah, definitely do. Yeah. You're, you're familiar, yeah. Um, you're growing up in northern New South Wales, of course. Oh, yeah. Shocking. And my brothers were did disgusting things with them that I was just like, so fearful. <laughs> like what? Like what were they doing to you? Share some of those stories. Uh, you know, just with cricket bats and golf um, sticks and stuff. And they'd always go out co- cane toad hunting. And I was, you know, like I grew up in north, in central Queensland, actually. And... Um, yeah, they'd all go out. I was just a little girl. I didn't like anything like that. And then they'd like hang them on the fence and do gross things with them. And I just, no. Like traumatic, yeah, traumatic so stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, so people, so I, are, people listening to this might think, oh, that's cruel. And that's, um, that's kind of mm. outrageous and like animal cruelty and stuff. But, but what, what they might not realize is where it's almost encouraged. It's like, you know, it's like a scourge. Mm. It's like pe- people are, it's almost the government almost tells you like, you know, uh, I know that right. they have, have things like, um, you know, helicopters that fly over and like just take out camels because they're a pest or whatever, you know, like, you know, things yeah. like this, it might seem crazy, but you don't realize that it's actually c- kind of encouraged. Yeah. They're very poisonous and they do kill a lot of beautiful animals. Um, but yeah, it, it really is. It is encouraged and it's almost like it's a sport <laughs> for some uh, in certain areas. But, but yeah, still, so, still, still doesn't stop it from, it is, is, it is a life form and it is traumatizing to witness that stuff. Oh yeah, age, absolutely. You know? I, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. So um, yeah, so I was quite traumatized as a kid from that. And up until a couple of years ago, I've had a cane toad phobia and it's not like I love them now or anything. I still think they're a bit gross, but um, I, it was like intense. I, you know, I would only live in areas where I knew that they wouldn't be around or that like I could get in the house really quickly. And like, if I saw one and I was just walking down the street with someone, I'd run the other way. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, it, was really cool. it was a problem. It was a legitimate problem. Oh yeah. And so very irrational, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like the first half an hour of the forum that, like, you know, I, and I've tried to overcome it with all sorts of different things. And with, I've gotten psychology and counselling and hypnotherapy. And then in the first, like, half an hour of the forum, I, um, I got what was happening with me. And I just, I hadn't seen it. I think the things that they said people had told me before are said to me. But I just, you know, you can't, it's hard to tell someone something when they see, when they see something a certain way. Um, or like give someone advice. It's really, it was like the penny finally dropped and I really got what was going on for me. Um, and I got that that fear or phobia was actually rippling out into my whole life and that it was coming up for me in other areas of my life with like public speaking, something I always avoided. And, and it all just comes down to the body sensations mm. for me. Mm. Um, and I think when I did your challenge, um, what I really loved was the reflection questions mm. and really just looking at what's going on. And I think it's so important to for everyone to reflect and look at their life and and dig a little bit deeper with what's going on. And because um, sometimes, you know, when you're just living and, and just taking action and doing things and without action, actually sitting back and taking a few moments to think about it it's um it's almost like we're just at the effect of everything and at the effect of our um human anatomy and and all that so I was really at the effect and Mm. so um yeah after doing all of my personal development stuff um and your challenge as well I yeah was able to I am able to now be like the cause of my life and and really get that when I'm fearful or so frightened like I am when it comes to cane toads that I can just understand that it's just my body sensations and there's things triggering that really feel like they're quite hardwired into me 
but that it is possible for me to to do something different and actually take the power back and yeah to overcome to, what's to, actually going on to override what's that, that? to override that yeah. that those responses like the responses a lot of people mm. find that uh how do you call it? like they are their emotions or that you know they i am scared mm. or you know i am you know, mm. this thing it's like as soon as we then we freeze time and we say that we are something then mm. it becomes you know that thing can become us and then we're obviously crippled and, and it is a very kind of reptilian brain thing where, it's, where we mm. jump into fight flight you know that kind of cortisol response that stress response the adrenaline comes mm-hmm. and, and it can be crippling it, you know we either freeze or we either feel like you know the heightened like we've got to run like you said run the other way or, you know, <laughs> or we have that hyper vigilance you know and, and we, we like mm. feel like we need to battle or fight something so you know and mm. when we bring the awareness just a simple awareness like you said just being aware and separating yourself from you know yourself from the, the sensations mm. so much power in that and that that kind of brings us out of that limbic system and into the more frontal mm. core which is, you know, we, right. that space where we can actually then operate, uh, you know, mm. with choice or free will or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And that is so powerful. And that's why I'm a big proponent. And, you know, this is why I love sharing um, meditation, mindfulness, because mm. it's so empowering. You know, it is. it just gives you your power back to you to actually then mm. choose how you want it experience yeah. life and extend you know choose how you want to respond to whatever is going on because you can't really get away from those emotions necessarily <laughs> you know it's like all right cool like, whatever yeah. i'm feeling feel it feel it mm. and go okay this is if you fully feel it it can fully process itself through you and it doesn't get locked in the mm. body and you know create that yeah. stuff or create those things that you don't right. actually want to experience so um mm. in terms of what it's looked like for you afterwards like yeah, how has that uh, manifested in in your life? Like, have you what have you been up to since uh, since doing this work? You, you, have you been hanging out with cane toads or doing public speaking? Or yeah, uh, not so much hanging out with cane toads. And it's kind of funny because in Canada, I obviously didn't see any. And when we came back, I was like, all right, I'm probably going to see heaps. Let's like, let's see how this is and bring it on. But I actually haven't seen any. It's been really funny. Yeah, and I think hilarious. the thing with that is that like the fact that it was almost like I was attracting them. 100%. It was like I was looking for them. I'd be walking on the street, like just trying to protect myself and looking for them. And now it's like I don't see any of them. Like I haven't seen one. That's and um, it's really funny how that can happen. Yeah. So um, I started a business, a life coaching business, uh, about a year and a half ago now. So that's been something I've been working on and have found just so rewarding and also challenging um, because I'm taking on like online marketing and branding, all the stuff I have no idea about. So um, it's been really amazing because what I got for myself um, after all this like self-discovery and personal development was that I really wanted to make a difference Mm. and that I am capable and it is possible for me to make a really big difference in the world. Um, So then I was kind of like, all right, what do I do now? Mm. And so I, you know, coaching is something I've always been interested in and just didn't know how to start it or what to do or if I was capable. And so Yes, yeah, so I didn't know if I was capable of um, actually making a difference. So once I had that realization that I totally am and it was kind of like this open space to create whatever I want and I decided I wanted to do coaching and, yeah, I started a business online and I've been writing my program and developing it and doing heaps of research all on my own. Um, and it's been really rewarding and super too rewarding because I get now how awesome challenges are and breaking through stuff that I'm fearful of is the most rewarding thing and also empowering other people to be empowered and connected with themselves and with others is just the most, my favorite thing in the world. 
<laughs> Amazing. And and even in that, it's like doing your the things that are most favorite. You know, that I think there's heaps of magic in that and heaps of power in that and just organizing our lives in such a way that we are doing more of the things that are our favorite thing. You know, it's like a, if more people did that, the, then I feel the world would be a, you know, be a different place, you know. Yeah, it's quite interesting though, because it's like sometimes I find it hard to distinguish what I want because there, a lot of fear does come up. Like I'll create this amazing goal and then um, I'll get really close to it but then I have to put in the work. I have to put in the time and then fear starts to arise and I start to get a bit uncomfortable. And then these self-sabotaging patterns, which I've done a really good job at creating over the years come up. So I can understand why people have a really hard time achieving goals and really getting results because that's come up for me a lot. And I think the most powerful thing I've learned would be um, not thinking of myself as a failure or if I don't achieve something, not really relating to myself as like, that's me, I'm a failure and being able to pick myself up and still try again, look at what was missing, look at, you know, what would be more useful next time to do or to put in place. And, um, also creating a community around that and creating a community around my goals has probably been like the most I don't know. So it's just super supportive that mm. because of my self-sabotaging stuff that I've created over the years, um, communicating those to people and telling, you know, creating this support network around me and sharing all of that with people that I love and that will support me. They're able to kind of go, Hey, like, you know, if I'm creating stuff that isn't aligned with what I really want, they're able to be like, Hey, that's, that's not what you're committed to. Right, so right. I think that's probably been like one of the, the best things with like breaking those self-sabotaging beliefs. Yeah. 100%. And that, and that piece there will make you a really good coach. Funnily enough, you know, having that, the, the empathy, you know, it's like, I know where you're coming from. This is a real thing mm. for a lot of people. And, you know, I feel that that's what makes someone, you know, it makes you relatable, builds trust, you know, and, um, enables people to go okay cool i'm not alone here you know that's a lot of the people right. a lot of people in the world struggle they think it's just them you know i'm the same it's like this mm. is just happening to me but then when you get some perspective you're like oh and you start talking to other mm. people and have that community around you that you realize oh it's not just me everybody feels this way whether you're right some kid in grade five or whether you're a 80 year old somewhere in, in on a farm or whether you're michael mm. phelps or oprah winfrey or you know what i mean like Right. Uh, every everyone experiences the same the same emotions the same fears the same, the same right. challenges you know yeah yeah I totally get that it's um that was one of the things I learned a couple of years ago or I think that was one of the things that really helped me um with overcoming the stuff I was going through was just getting that actually we're all there's all all of us are very similar in, in so many ways. It doesn't matter how successful someone is or, you know, there's not this hierarchy, which I didn't realize I had in my head of certain people that doesn't exist. And we're all going through the same stuff. Mm -hmm. It might look slightly different, but we all have these fears and beliefs. Um, and we're all pretty similar. Yeah. We're all, we're all made of the same stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and and that team that you mentioned as well, having that team around you is super helpful. Like it's one of the biggest pieces, you know, where I, I, I see everyone as individual cells or selves in the, mm. in the bigger organism that is humanity. And right. as cells in the body, you know, if, if you have six cells in the body, if they're, they're diseased or whatever, or you, you cut yourself, you know, other ones around there, they, they're going to be, um, they're going to be hurting as well. And, and then that draws in mm. those, the healthy cells to come and help them out and, and start regenerating them back. Into right. Themselves. I love it. Yeah. So, so when, <laughs> when we ourselves are like sick or we have like mental health mm. issue or we, we struggle or even just our, our disposition, you know, we, we beat ourselves up or we have a poor mm. self image or we're depressed or whatever the thing is, we're angry. Um, 
you know, these are all valid emotions, but if we're too heavily, you know, cited on that kind of pessimism or glass half empty or, you know, kind of mm. um, way, and we're not doing anything to, to put ourselves in a, in an optimal state, then mm. we, you know, we can actually start attracting those, those kind of people and those kind of um, mm -hmm. environments. If we put ourselves in an environment that isn't conducive to health and happiness and, mm -hmm. and presence and, you know, all the things that do give us health. So whether it's exercising or eating right, or, you know, if we're hanging around the, how I call it like bad company, you know, like I'm putting mm -hmm. air quotes there because everything is both good and bad, but it, you know, in, in the environment that is not healthy, then it's very difficult mm -hmm. to then, pull ourselves out of those states and get ourselves into into full health so putting yourself around and actually consciously choosing who you're spending time with and having that honest mm -hmm. honest mirror where people go hang on a sec like you said you know this isn't what you're committed to what, what, are, you, what are you doing you know um is yeah super duper helpful and super important mm -hmm. you know i think that we can't do it without if we're where we can actually like even though you can be in any situation and you can still get out of those situations with, with the power of the mind, you know, that there is, mm. that is the truth, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. It's going to be a lot more work mm. than if you put yourself surrounded by positive influences and people who are healthy influences and not just people with spaces and environments, get in nature, things like this. It's super, super mm. helpful and important, I feel. And it just makes things a lot easier because whether we like it or not, we will get uh, impressed upon. You know, we will. Mm -hmm. I know for myself that I'm highly uh, impressionable. So if I'm around, right. you know, environments that are not conducive to health, I'll, I'll fall into those things. So it's like super important right. to get around people totally. who, are, who are doing the things that I want to be doing or, you know, at where I'm at, where I want to be at and so on and so forth. And also have that other piece where you're working with people mm. who you can impress upon in, in a positive way as well. Right. Yeah, it's been really quite amazing coaching because, like, I feel like I'm still pretty fresh on, like, you know, it's only been a couple of years since I've really had these massive breakthroughs myself. And, you know, my old way of thinking probably would have been like, no, I need to go and get all the qualifications. You know, I haven't, you know, it hasn't been long enough. I need to like get everything in line before I can go and coach. But it's been really like an amazing learning experience for me to actually um, be passing on what I've been learning and just be vulnerable with people and, and tell them what I'm going through. And it's not like because I'm a coach, I'm perfect. And, you know, I do actually, I've had a lot of thoughts that have come up for me that have been like, you know, when I've been feeling down or um, going through stuff, saying like I've said things to myself, it's like I can't share this with people because mm. I need to appear like I've got my life like perfectly in order be able to coach mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so interesting when I catch myself thinking that way and realizing that actually it's my vulnerability and and like you know my empathy to understand what other people understand what I'm going through um and passing that on to other people is the thing that actually gets me through it even quicker mm -hmm. and um and helps other people yeah yeah, it's, it's super powerful, that vulnerability piece. You know, I think um, it's mm. Brene Brown talks a lot about that. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, she's, she's been studying that for over a decade. And, yeah, there is super uh, power. There's a, a proper power there where you, you're – it's like you're okay with not being okay. And it's like or you're okay yeah. with being – flawed or you're okay with being imperfect mm. uh, perfection is something that comes up a lot like it stops a lot of people that perfectionism it's mm. it's uh it can also be empowering you know striving for perfection as well you know if we strive for perfection mm. we can also be unattached to it i, I remember yeah. you saying something earlier which i don't think it was your actual words but just hearing between the lines of what it was it felt like the shift one of the shifts that you've experienced is kind of letting go of that perfectionism and being okay with mm. being wrong or being, you know, not, not getting it right. Or, you know, it's like right. letting, letting go of, it's like taking the emotion out of it. It's like, all right, this is where I'm at. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and not going, okay, that means this. It's just like, this is where I, what's going mm. on. And that's just that. There's mm. no need to feel any certain way about right. it. It's just these <laughs> facts. This is where I'm at. And right now what needs to happen you know it's like being really yeah. unemotional being really yep. un unemotional about it is super helpful it's very kind of what you call like masculine kind of way but it's effective at the same time mm -hmm. you know and, and kind of marrying those two it's like 
being okay with being emotional and and feeling the emotions deeply and at the same time being unemotional about what needs to happen right. about it. Yeah, I used to always like relate to myself as like emotional and sensitive, but I'd say it in this like really bad way. Negative kind like, of oh, really emotional. To it. Yeah, I, yeah, and I remember like when I was in high school, I, I remember Googling or just, yeah, like trying to research, you know, how to overcome being so sensitive or emotional, <laughs> which now I think is really funny because um, it's just that detachment. Like I'm, I still get angry and I still have these emotions and, you know, sometimes I cry a lot and like now I'm able to really experience it in this detached way it's like and just let it be and i overcome stuff so much quicker when mm. i can do that yeah it's it's really cool to um it is quite freeing it's like and then being vulnerable with people when i'm feeling you know certain emotions you know that aren't just happy and joyful and like excited and powerful but sharing the other emotions i find that i i, I um like I go through them a lot more quickly mm. and um, I can't remember what I was talking about to someone the other day, but I, I didn't want to share it with her. And then once I did, I think I shared some kind of fear with her. Like I'm really scared that I'm not good enough at work or something. And when I could just say it out loud, I've got this group on Facebook called um, wild mind set free because I think we all have these wild minds and all these wild thoughts. And then as soon as you kind of just say it out loud, it's like it just, it sets it free. Wow, and, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so I haven't actually written on that group for a while, but for a while there I was writing on it every day and sharing something that I was like scared of sharing with people mm. um, because I have had this like per per perfectionist type of, personality where I just you know I can't say something out loud until I figured it out in my head first and so to just kind of you know say something out loud before I've even you know figured out what's going on can feel really vulnerable um and risky because mm. I feel like there's this risk of I don't know appearing I don't know what it is weak I think you know I'm so used to it's, yeah relating to vulnerability as weakness and I think um uh, the lady you're talking about what's her name Brianne Br Brown Brene Brown yeah Brene Brown yeah I think she mentions it that like most people think of vulnerability as weakness but I think when you experience being vulnerable in like yeah just just saying something that you're fearful of and doing something you're fearful of um and being vulnerable with people it's really powerful yeah, like it just it sets it free whatever's going on in your head because we make things so much more complicated than our head to so just say it out loud it really just there's this freedom and power in in doing that 100 percent. simply naming it and that probably helps with not mm. like it's giving you a bit of separation from it from like okay it's not me it's just this idea or it's just this mm -hmm. you know, story you know it's like all right cool if you can name it then it sort of puts it out there and you can see it rather than if it, you can't name it or you don't want to say it then it's like still you it's like this it's yeah funny your identity right it's like you if, hold you, on to if, it, yeah. if you can then go name it you kind of put you turn around and you're looking at it as just a concept or an idea and then that gives you that yeah. separation or detachment as you called it earlier which is yeah. that empowering and it also what it does with sharing with other people it just creates connection doesn't it like gives people that oh, okay cool you're just like me we are that we are yeah it creates this space and of like relatedness and um this space for other people to be vulnerable and to share things that they might be holding on to 100 mm -hmm. percent. and yeah i guess for that practice as well that you know writing about it name you know writing every day those are so such cool practices are there any other kind of i guess i don't know rituals or you know practices mm -hmm. or that you engage in that help you or, or your other or people you work mm -hmm. with in terms of um oh, like yeah. making these shifts and changes mm, so many <laughs> and so um let me name a few so at the moment, I'm working on a self-love, self-care class for women. And so, like, it's only a couple of hours, so I'm trying to work out which exercises to use. 
um yeah, yeah ref refining so, refining the, the the gold you know it's always a, which ones they're all so good when, but, got a small amount of time is always tough uh right <laughs> yeah exactly but i think the main ones for me that i'm really using at the moment are like you know mirror work can like reconnecting with myself in the mirror and what i do with that is i get really messy and like I let out all of the emotions, like whatever's there for me, and it can look so messy and it's great. Um, but normally I start off with anger, to be honest, like and frustration. Like I just, I get it out in front of the mirror. I look at myself the whole time in the eye while I'm doing it. And normally it transforms into like love or like, something sensual in the mirror and I just dance and I look at myself the whole time I think that's the most important bit like really because yeah I think you know I create this image of who I am um in my head and then it's like as soon as I'm feeling like if I'm you know saying mean things to myself or not feeling good enough or feeling inferior if I just go and stand in the mirror and make myself do it for at least five minutes um, because I'm really good at like pretending I don't have enough time or like it's just not going to make a difference. Um, so I have to, I just have this thing where I'm like, no, five minutes, at least five minutes. Sometimes I end up spending longer because I'm just so in love with what I'm, with who I am. <laughs> um, I almost didn't say that. That's so funny. Um, I was like, no, that's so vain. Don't tell people you think that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I, I really feel like I fall in love with myself when I do that. And then I'm just awesome. Like I go out and I get to just be with people rather than these, you know, wild thoughts that I create in my head. Mm. I'm like, I'm there. I'm connected to myself, which means I'm connected to other people mm. and what's really important to me. So, yeah, mirror work is huge. Um, and acknowledgement is another thing for me. Um so like, you know, it's almost like that detachment from emotions. It's really like acknowledging my thoughts, my feelings, my wants, my mm. whatever it is, and just acknowledging what's there. Mm. Because I find that, and I've found this with a lot of people, is like we want to run away from those uncomfortable feelings or the emotions. We want to run away from our fears and you know, whatever is going on in our environment that we might not like. It's really just acknowledging things for what they are. And I think what I mean by that is just not trying to change or fix things. Mm. Because it's like when you avoid emotions or you try and suppress things, they just come back 10 times worse, like raging at you, like, acknowledge me. <laughs> and when you acknowledge them, it's like they're, they're set free. Mm. And there doesn't have to be this added, like, meaning of of why i'm feeling something or what i'm doing there's not this analysis which is the way that my mind wants to think because i want to figure things out and like i've been really quite i am i have been and i can be quite analytical um and like before like i've always been such a good planner but it can really get the best of me sometimes because i want to try and plan every fine detail and you can't really plan everything like you can plan only so much and then things happen the way they happen and you've just got to acknowledge that and there's a lot of power in acknowledgement and also like you know not just acknowledging myself and how i feel but acknowledging other people mm. um so that's something i practice on a daily basis because i do find that that's not a natural thing and i think discipline and structure is really important and I can't remember the video I watched, but there was this great video I watched on like freedom. And what the guy said was discipline and structure equals freedom. Mm -hmm. And I naturally don't think that way. Like I, I think, no, I just want to go with the flow, just do things with how I feel. Um, but what I've learned is that that really there's I don't get any results out of being that way. And mm -hmm. it is really nice temporarily. And it's nice to like plan time to do that and to just let, you know, have a couple of hours here and there to just do things at my own pace and how I want to. But really, it's way more satisfying to um, have structure is what I've found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think having practices that I do every day and every week 
for me is really important and um, I really like to encourage people to find what works for them and I think it for me it's really helped to study and um, do a lot of different courses and really find what works for me mm. um, and then build my own routine each week and that's what I like to work on with people that I coach I like to really find what what fits them and rather that you know I can I can suggest things but I've really learned that giving advice doesn't really empower people and that's not really coaching mm. so what I do it's almost like in my coaching conversations it's just like it's a discovery between two people 100%. and instead of me being like I have all these strategies I've figured everyone out I've figured life out it's like all right let's let's see what's there to discover and um and that's, I think that's the beauty in it because every conversation I have is so different and, um, and it's way more satisfying to, to be that way. Yeah. hundred percent. Always keeps it fresh as well. Like everyone is different. So I, f I find that coaching mm. is a lot like, it's all about the power of the questions, you know, it's right. really inviting people totally. to, to ask um, more powerful questions of themselves, of life in right. general. And it is that discovering it's like, what is, what's most important to you? What, what, ignites you what's your mm. thing that really sets you alight and inspires you and and how can we bring more of that into your life and and less of the mm. stuff that, that is disempowering and energy sapping and you know problem mm. causing and stress causing stress inducing and all that stuff and you know then it's a it's sort of the way presents itself you know that it's not this right. one particular way it's like well let's just let's find out what's going on here and oftentimes mm it does take like just a reflection of someone else just to put mm. things in a different way or ask you and, Oh, I never thought of it like that. Or I never even right. thought about asking myself that, or, you know, and, and when, mm. when you find that, that stuff out, then again, the, the path becomes obvious, you know, it's like, right. we don't, we don't know what oh, we yeah. don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's excellent. So yeah, that discipline equals freedom. Uh, I think Yoko Willink wrote a book mm. about that and, um, yeah, right. that's an excellent concept. Something that I really am a big believer in as well. And, and also those other pieces, you know, that acknowledgement work, that mirror work definitely is, it brings it, you know, it's literally you're doing self-awareness, you're <laughs> being aware of yourself, right? And the higher uh -huh. level of awareness is, then the more we can actually operate from a place of sovereignty and mm. a space of self-governance and self-regulation yeah. and and when we have that self-regulation then you know we can do anything it's so amazing it's so beautiful you can honestly create anything like anything is possible when you do that that's yeah. that's how i find yeah that's what i find it's super fun mm -hmm. super fun and it's awesome you're doing all this work so um yeah thank you for really jumping in and a lot of people are just too like you said too scared or not don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation or mm. don't want to put them don't want to experience uncomfortability in the body so they either like don't communicate or they they mm. avoid or they run like you said and that might look like you know being a workaholic or it might look like um mm. you know mm -hmm. going into addictive behaviors or it might just look like mm. um what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, being a hermit and like, you know, getting away right. from people or not socializing or might be too much socializing, partying, whatever kind of escapism mm -hmm. it is, um, you know, and, and rather than just sitting with the uncomfortability or even, I was going to say even better would be like to welcome the uncomfortability. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I found. One of the most powerful practices is purposefully putting myself outside of my comfort zone. You know, yeah, <laughs> wow, purpose. that takes something. I love that. <laughs> Just little things like having a cold shower, you know, you know, having cold right. showers, and I don't really want jumping into really cold yep. water. Um, you know, asking myself, what am I avoiding and, and going, mm -hmm. all right, prioritizing that. Um, what, what conversations are, are really scaring me or, you know, making me fearful? Mm -hmm. Where do I feel nervous? You know, where do I feel like I don't know what I'm doing? You know, putting myself mm. purposefully in those in those situations um, is a is a really kind of inoculator against the habit of hiding or running away or avoiding or you know escaping because that that was a big mm -hmm. one for me was just going full escapism during my during my youth. You know, and um, so that's you know I find that if I don't 
purposefully put myself in those situations, those habits will creep back in. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to keep on top of it. That's yeah. like me, with me in public speaking. Um, yeah, I, I think something happened when I was in school where, you know, I was really eager to answer questions and I would speak in front of people and, you know, I never even really thought what people thought of me. Like it wasn't in my head. And then all of a sudden I was really insecure and, and I couldn't do it. Like physically I felt really threatened and I wouldn't do it. And then, um, yes, I've started a couple of years ago now um, putting myself in those situations. And I have, there have been periods where I haven't done any public speaking and it, it's like, it's harder to do it. Like it, those like physical muscle, sensations. Like a, it's like a muscle. That yeah. Like it is. When yeah. Do it, right? Yeah, when you're used to thinking a certain way, it can be really hard to break that sometimes. Um, well, like, you know, it's not, but it feels like it is. And then the more you do it, yeah, it's like building that muscle. And so I've been putting myself in in these situations. I was doing like a, I've been doing a women empowerment project thing where I interview women that in different communities about what their, you know, their stories. And for me, that was huge. I'd never done anything like that. And all of a sudden I'm like, interviewing people and I'm like what this is so not like me and it was incredible because I've been able to see myself so much bigger than I ever have and um yeah I did my first women empowerment project live event a couple of months ago now and um it was yeah just unreal to put on an event have these conversations with women about you know their 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 storytelling stories that they were going to perform and then standing up at the front and emceeing and yeah it was just amazing because it's just not it didn't seem possible a couple of years ago how was that how was that process for you because i know that happened re- just shortly after we worked together and mm-hmm. yeah, how did you i guess overcome because i imagine that fear that nervousness and all that stuff was highly present at the mm-hmm. time how did you just go, fuck it? Like, did you just say, fuck it, I'm going to do it? Did you have, like, did you set, get yourself around people that were, 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 you know, championing you on? Or did you have processes, some, like, visualization or breathing? Like, what? how specifically did you overcome that stuff? Um, I didn't do anything, really. <laughs> like, not consciously. Like, I think that probably, that all sounds amazing, but I think... It is all just sitting with the fear, sitting with the body sensations. And it's like I've, I haven't, I've, it's like I've seen something that I can't unsee now. Mm. So like was it just, was, was that the piece of, okay, I, I do have a, a choice here. It's not, I'm not at, right. the, I'm not at the effect anymore. I actually do, I am at cause right. and it's up to me if it's going yeah. to happen. And I think getting that we're all, a bit scared in many ways like I think I had this realization that like we're all pretty fearful of one another in ways you know Mm -hmm. like we all laugh so while I'm standing up there sweating and like my heart's racing (laughs) there's you know there's other people that would be feeling the exact same so it's just Mm -hmm. like this it's like there's no difference between you and me we are we're the same same thing you know we're we're one and it, it doesn't, I don't know, it was almost like the stuff that's going on in my head doesn't really exist. So, so it's like an acceptance. It was, yeah, it was just like, I don't know, I still felt really nervous and I got up and I was a bit shaky at times and, you know, I shared with everyone that my, a bit about my journey and like that public, you know, what I've shared with you today about public speaking and um, I think that really helps. That was like one of the first thing I said. I was just really honest with everyone and vulnerable and I um I shared about my body sensations and what was going on for me in that moment like there was no hiding anymore there's not this like pretense of I've got to be perfect and and appear perfect and I can stuff up and make mistakes and say Mm. things wrong you know gives you permission permission. you're like yeah Yeah. 100 percent it's very powerful that say hey this is my first kind of gig you know it's not apologizing it's going hey this is where i'm at I'm, you know it's, it's yeah. honesty it's honesty it's like i haven't done this much but you know i'm here and then it's almost mm. gives, gives the that acknowledgement like you said and going okay this is what i'm feeling and i'm not denying it i'm not like 
putting my closing my mm. eyes and going, this isn't real. I'm gonna I'm gonna fake it till I make it kind of thing. Well, it mm. kind of is. It is. It is kind of faking until you make it at the same time because it's just mm. like, well, even though I'm feeling this, I'm gonna act like, uh, you know, that, right. I am, that I am confident regardless. But even though I'm not feeling it, yeah, it's like it's almost just like. Yeah, it just gave me this freedom to acknowledge it. But it, it was almost like I was, I'm just proud of myself. Like, I'm actually telling you this because I'm really proud of myself for being here. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I and was I, really scared. I couldn't do this a couple of years ago. And here I am. And I'm yeah. doing it. And I, yeah. yeah like. <laughs> and even, even better than that, like being on the, on the receiving end, you know, it's like, it's even less of a, I guess there's like a power dynamic in that if you're the person interviewing the women at least you have kind of a control there you know whereas you don't know what right. i'm going to ask you you don't know where this this conversation is going to go so it's just like an, an, a, another piece of like yeah that uh that courage i guess it's like you don't know like especially there's parts of you that go well and and it comes from you you're mentioning before you, you don't know kind of what that fear is you know the fear of like mm. public speaking and being judged and having people have an opinion of you, like you, you know, have, wanting people to like you is very normal. You know, if we go back in the, in civilization, that, you know, that if we were judged as, you know, we put ourselves in a position where we could be ridiculed or we could be shunned or abandoned, you know, mm. that's a very real threat to our livelihood, our survival. Right. Cause if we were put outside <laughs> the tribe, then we would literally die you know we won't get right. <laughs> so it's actually the fear yep. of death um so, right. so, you know so really uh really showing up and putting ourselves there anyway is a uh, is actually empowering and actually builds mm -hmm. your level of confidence and your level of like mm -hmm. self-esteem in a way as well it's like that self-efficacy that self-acceptance um so yeah like good on you for for being here and and anyone who's mm -hmm. doing that stuff as well anyone who's doing anything that scares them um even if it's like not that regularly, even if it's like once a year, you know, mm. if we can do it every, people say do something that scares you every day. It's, it's, mm. it's great in, con in theory, but if you're going to literally write down 365 things, or it could just be one thing that is consistently mm. scary, and maybe you do it, right. do it for a month or something. And then, mm. it, you know, and then it might be something as simple as having a conversation or looking someone in the eye and gazing with them or totally. you know, sharing something mm. that nobody knows about you, or it might be something like mm. learning, marketing or learning branding or learning you know right. social media or you know people mm. like oh, i'm a luddite i don't do computers well that might be the scary thing or it might be right. you know, heights it might be climbing up a hill or a mountain mm. uh, or it might be you know whatever it might be learning a language or traveling you know that whatever it is if you're mm. doing things regularly like that i feel that that is good for you but also good for those around you and you know people seeing mm. other people doing it is, is very beneficial yeah this is my long-winded way of saying thank you for <laughs> for um for being that you know being the example of of somebody who is who has that courage. So thank you for being here, and um, mm. let's um let's definitely continue this conversation going forward. It's been it's been fun having mm. it. So thank you for sharing your journey. It's been a lot of value yeah. in this chat as well as like yeah like I'm just mm. looking back over our conversation like yeah there's plenty of uh, juice here that people could relate to I can imagine. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm really passionate about a world that works and for us all to just get you know head towards a world where we're all connected and eager to understand ourselves and understand each other more rather than fighting and reacting and so I'm this is my this is my way of taking part in in that by yeah doing the things I'm fearful of and questioning my whole belief system and encouraging other people to do the same so that we can better understand ourselves and better understand each other. Yeah, it's working. You know, people are obviously, mm -hmm. you know, running these events for women and you know, you're you're building this business where you're helping people to to figure things out for themselves and create more of the lives that mm -hmm. they want to lead. So yeah, it's it's uh, commendable. You know, it's definitely what I, well, I love. Thank, thank, thank you, Zulu, because you just do some incredible things in the community. And I know I've said this to you before, but I don't think I've said it to your face. 
Um, thank you. Like, I really want to acknowledge you for being such a huge contribution mm. for this world and for everyone that you connect with and the people you impact because that would be huge. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not just the people we talk to, but then, you know, the stuff that we say to people then ripples out to those people, their people, and it just goes on. And it's really incredible what just one human pe being can do. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. And, and knowing <laughs> that and owning that is huge. It's, it's super fun for me. It's, it's almost a piece of like, I was literally well, just recently before this call, jumped off another call that I had and we were... I was asked the question, why, why, like, what's the purpose of me doing what all the things I'm doing essentially? And mm. the, as I tuned in, the response was like, well, it's to honor and realize, first of all, to realize my potential. Like that's the number one, to realize mm. my purpose, but also to honor my purpose. It's like to, to have an appreciation and gratitude for the opportunity to be alive and to right. honor that gifts of life and <laughs> you know to honor i feel like I, it's almost like this idea of like spitting on the hand of god if i didn't you know it's like here's this <laughs> here's this opportunity but like no thank you so if i don't step into right. that fear if i don't step into that purpose and realizing the potential mm -hmm. thing, i feel like i'm being ungrateful you know that that's an amazing why i love that one of my good friends jen always like does this nagging thing with me where she says but why <laughs> but why and then I answer and she says but why and I have to keep like discovering why like what is it and I think you've really hit the nail on the head with your one yeah <laughs> yeah for me it is it is helping and then embodying that for myself so that I'm you know I feel like that right now you know I think purposes can change but for me it's about raising the consciousness of the planet you know raising the mm. consciousness of myself you know by raising the consciousness by myself I, I then influence that mm my immediate environment so you know for me to realize to, to facilitate the realization of potential in others which that's what i feel the purpose is then i have to do that myself right <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I, you know you can't really transmit something that you're you're not embodying yourself or integrating yourself so it's a oh, constant yeah. journey and, and having these conversations with people like yourself that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions is a lot of it mm -hmm. is for my benefit <laughs> it's like i'm asking you questions right. So, all right cool i get to download a bunch mm -hmm. of knowledge and wisdom from other people yep um, and then i get to share it with people as well and those mm -hmm. ripples happen like you mentioned so keep the mm -hmm. ripples rippling because um yeah it's a good thing you're doing you're doing some great things in the world and we both are so i guess we just keep keep doing mm -hmm. it right <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> awesome source thank you so much for your time and energy and sharing it with us here today millie thank you zulu and um it was a pleasure yeah, it's absolutely fun. So in terms of just signing off, is there any last little thought that you'd uh, like to leave us with? Um, I'd like to say to anyone watching this to keep questioning yourself. Because as soon as you've got life figured out and yourself figured it out and everyone else, life gets really boring and you become stuck. So keep curiosity open and keep discovering life until you're not here anymore. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For the, an Mwah. amazing one. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, sounds good. Lots of love. Thank you. Till next time, guys, keep the flow growing and the growth flowing.